Mike Tommy. Good, G. How you doing? Good to see you. Fuck yeah. All right, where are we going today to eat? Let's go to Chiba Hut, my dude. This is the spot? Toasted subs. Nice. And then we're going to do some skating after this, right? Yeah, let's get it. City All right. Heights. All right. I'm it's excited. I'm excited. Local park. Okay. All right. Let's oh, thank it. you, sir. Good looking out. Hey, what I do you eat like? Every, I, what I do you eat enjoy? Every, I eat everything. Uh, Cali Mist is pretty bomb. Which one is um, it? Cali Mist is right here. Cali Mist. Yeah. Roasted California turkey breast, Club. Chipotle mayo, fresh jalapenos, bacon, pepper jack. I could eat that. Nope. Yeah. It's a bomb bomb. I'll try that, please. The Cali okay. Mist. Same size, blood size? Do you have shake? <laughs> We've got our version of shake. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like crumbs. Oh. Just like... <laughs> How about a pinner, please? Is that white or garlic bread? Sativa or indica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a hybrid? Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, garlic herb, please. You guys want any chips, drinks, munchies? Yeah, they got Ooh. all these super bomb, like. Whoa. Which one's your favorite? Um, I don't know. I'm a chocolate guy, so. Get one of those. You get one of those. Chocolate. I'll get one of these. I want to try one of these fruity tooty ones. Yep. Yeah. Then um, I'm probably going to grab some chips as well. All got right. all the chips right here. Get my jalapeno. Oh, yeah. Get I love the spice I going. I like spice, too. I like jalapeno. Any drinks for you guys? I'll do a virgin michelada. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'll do um, an IPA, please. I think it's that St. Archer. Good choice. Escape here. Look at this. And you get, instead of numbers here, uh, we're going to pick Wu Tang as our fake, order. We can fake it. Wu Tang forever. Bunch of goodness. Yeah, yeah. So, Tommy, where are we at? Uh, we're at Juba Hut. It's a local little sandwich spot. And, um, been coming here for years. The spot's just. It's like Subway times 10. <laughs> it's bomb. Nice. What, like, when and where did you find this place? Actually, uh, the first time I ever heard of Chiba Hut, it hadn't came to California yet. I think it was still in Arizona. Oh. And I was on a skate trip a long time ago. I believe we were out in like Cowtown area. I think we went there for lunch and saw this big blind hanging from the, the roof, from the ceiling. And I was like... A big what? Oh yeah, like uh, a big blind hanging through the ceiling. So it's like home of the blind. I think like, there's one in here too. Yeah, there's one right there. <laughs> I was like tripping because I was like... Are we in a dispensary or like they serve weed here? Like, is this supposed to be a sandwich spot? It says like Chiba Hut toasted subs. And like, are we gonna get toasted and eat subs? Or like, I don't get it. Like, Whoa. whatever, you know? So, I was thinking, uh, you know, like maybe they had like some kind of like secret fucking dispensary, but like they serve sandwiches to cover it up. So, I'm like, I don't know what the hell was going on. But I uh, ended up ordering our food, ended up being super bomb. And uh, they have all kinds of like weird little stuff, like like this right here, like the rat table. I'm like, so stuck like, on that. You got all the different like hip hop names and like instead characters of numbers, and whatnot. Instead of numbers. Yeah. And like okay, that's sick. And then uh, over at like the uh, the fountain where they have all the sodas, they have like uh, they got like a photo of Ice Cube uh-huh. for the cubes, for the Ice Cube. <laughs> and have, like a bunch of different stuff, just like hygiene stuff, and I'm like. That's really cool and um, a good way to catch people's attention. So they're killing it on that behalf. And then um, other than that, I mean, yeah, like after I had that sandwich um, and then found out later that they had, had made a spot down here, uh, we're over off the college location in uh, San Diego State University area, which is uh, pretty well known. There's a lot of people that come here, but there's also one in uh, Pacific Beach. So, I, I don't, I've never even been to that one. I've seen it, but just never been there. <laughs> like, yeah. so I know it's there. This is probably closer to your path? Yeah, so I actually moved in and bought a house, uh, 
like maybe three blocks from here. Like oh, super close. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a good like eight, maybe nine years ago. And then since then, we've kind of lived in the area. We had to sell the house and uh, move like a couple blocks down, you know, down the street. And still, like I would come here on a regular basis. And got to know the staff really well. Uh, met the owner and you know just hit it off really. And then since then, I've been coming in. I've had I've had a couple times where I've DJed here for like a 420 party. And, right. Uh, We've done some guest bartending, and you know, it's just been it's been a good experience to to have a local spot like this and to be able to like be a part of it. And, like you know, I, I figured if I ever did need a job, hopefully I'd uh, be an option for hire. <laughs> but that would be sick. <laughs> rad, that's rad. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, like a couple times they're like, hey, like do you want to uh, be part of the 420 party? I'm like, yeah, like I DJ so. I'll just come here and DJ. And what, what kind of music? Reggae, mostly. I, I do I do a little bit of everything. Um, I just really enjoy reggae the most. It's like the most like mellow vibe. Kind of just keeps me level headed. A lot of messages and uh, and the rhythm and just the vibe it carries. It's good. Good vibes. Yes, positive <laughs> vibes, man. Yeah. Positive vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love, I love reggae. I love reggae music. Yeah. Love it. That's sick, dude. Um, oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers, yes. What are you drinking there? I'm actually drinking a Virgin, Virgin Michelada. Virgin Michelada. How do they make that? Just like all Clamato based and uh, like uh, Oduls in there or something, maybe? Nah, I've, I've uh, done Oduls like at my house by myself, but I just drink them straight now. I don't even put anything in them. It's just like, it's like basically a Bloody Mary mix. Uh-huh. And usually people would obviously add a beer to it, or right. I mean, depending on how you want it, if you just want it to be a bloody, you just add vodka. Right. Um, yeah, I just got used to drinking the mix by itself, and luckily um, that's helped me stay sober. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about later. But, okay. Yeah. So you're not even in the try like the near beers to add to it. Um, I have, I have. They just don't have any here right now. So oh, okay. if they did, I probably would have like an old or something right here. But yeah. it all depends too. I've I've tried several different non-alcoholic beers, and some taste better than others. I think Odul is obviously my favorite just because yeah. it, it's the closest to it's like a basic beer, you know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have like a strong taste either way, so right, right. it mixes pretty well. And it's kind of like I. Uh, I'll even add uh, sparkling water. You know? and that's just like the same. It just gives it that carbonation. Just a filler. So. Yeah, I, I went through that little stage. When my wife was pregnant, I stopped drinking too. So I just kept on drinking near beer. So I tried all these different brands. And I found out the one that tasted more like beer to me was like the German ones. The oh, German yeah. near beer. Yeah, like uh, Bex or something. Behringer. Oh, Behringer. There yeah. you go. I think that's one of them. They were so close to like that flavor. But yeah, I remember drinking that. But, but then again, I'm thinking like how you said, Old Duel is probably the most mellow to mix with that. Yeah. I think those German ones are a little too strong tasting. To mix yeah, because they have they have a different bite to them. Yeah. I just actually tried the um, the Heineken non-alcoholic. That's like one. Zero, zero point zero, whatever. Yeah. And that one's just like not my style. Not, like, it's just too too skunky. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You know it. I don't remember. I, I never really drank uh, Heineken in the first place, so when I would, I'd just probably drink because that was the only thing to drink. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I like to enjoy what I'm what I'm drinking, and uh, yeah, just like some mellow to go with my uh, gelato. All right, that's dope. I'm stoked on that that tip right now. Okay. I'm wondering, like, living growing up in San Diego. Would your parents feed you growing up? I don't know. A little bit of everything, really. Um, whenever, whenever we would go to my grandparents, we would eat bean cheese, Be- bean cheese burritos, like just a bowl of bean cheese. Are you part like, Hispanic? Yeah, yeah. So oh. my last name is Sandoval, and that ah. roots from my grandparents. And, um, I think. Well, yeah. My grandpa's last name is Sandoval, and my grandma's last name is Correa. So, um, they both came from Colorado, but then 
obviously my ancestors from different parts. And, um, I remember at some point my grandmother telling me that we have family from uh, Veracruz. So yeah, we're we're rooted from Mexico and um, from our long lines. Obviously, we migrated up here, but um, yeah, like we grew up kind of. Uh, you know, my my mom and my stepmom are both white women, so we eat like a lot of basic like American, American food. Okay. You know, like cheeseburgers, hot dogs, mac and cheese, like all the like most basic shit you can think of. Right. And then on the other hand, like my grandma would make a lot of Mexican meals. You know, like um, beans, beans and rice, like. You know, Boys, yeah, like she would want whatever. Well, she wasn't like so into that stuff, and, and if she did make it, we never really got to eat it because we weren't like, you know, our palates weren't advanced to like be able to really take that and enjoy it. You know, we were kind of like dumbed down by the, the American food. I mean, which is pretty typical, like when you're younger, especially. In our time, we didn't have as many options. Like, I feel like nowadays you can go anywhere and get anything. And it's like your parents feed you everything because they want you to eat so much different types of food that you're well-rounded. And, uh, that's well-rounded. Something, yeah, I mean, literally. <laughs> but that's something that I do for my kids as well. Like, I have uh, three. I have two daughters and a son. My oldest being 10. My boy is in the middle and he's six. And my youngest is my other girl, and she's three. So, wow. yeah, we got a lot of food. Yeah. Speaking oh, of food, oh, we got here. Lazy and humble. I'm the Cali, or no, he's the Cali Miss. He's the Cali. I'm the uh, Grief Folk. Yeah, yeah. Grief Folk. Yeah, my. We got here. Cali. It's the Cali Miss right there. What's in this? So that's like our number one salad right there. It's your turkey club, bacon, chipotle. Little avocado on top, top it off with those fresh crisp veggies. Uh, all in all, this is the number one seller killer here. Nice, uh, thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Over here on the Grifo, nice, uh, you know, in the healthy section. All meatless there, just gonna do a nice fresh cream cheese. Uh, pepper jack cheese down there. And we throw on all the fresh crisp veggies in our garden. Fresh guacamole spread. It's a mouthful, it's fucking delicious. Nice. Solid. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, you like go. you guys need sauces to go around. What kind of sauces do you got? Uh, honey mustard's ahead. Uh, our house-made ranch. Everything's made in house. Uh, barbecue sauce, teriyaki. Spicy? Yeah, got a buffalo sauce, Jamaican red. What'd you say? It's a Jamaican red. Can I try that, please? Yeah, it's got a little buttery, uh, little buttery taste in there with a nice buffalo. Uh, is it by, I think it's Trappy's buffalo sauce. Okay. Oh, right. Spices. So, so now to try that. Yeah, let's get two sides of that. All right. Yeah, awesome. All right. Yeah. So uh, finishing up basically on uh, what we were raised on, it was just an array of things, you know, like mostly mostly American food, and then as we grew into like our teenage years, we trying more and more. And uh, now there's a lot of things I like nowadays that I never like damn shit about before like, like what like brussels sprouts for instance so it used to be like frowned upon to the ultimate level and of course at the time they were probably made as bland as could be you know like you just probably steam them and put them on the plate and like what the hell is that <laughs> but yeah you know now everything's like it's like a level up from what it used to be you got bacon you got like olive oil you throw in some onions and like squash and you know, you just flash really have, it a little bit to get yeah, a little, yeah you little, get a little crisp on them yeah. like it, it's really a, it's really changed you know like my, my palate as well like I eat everything hey did so, rub oh that sounds got good got you a little nice uh, wow. Wow. There. which one's which Jamaican red buttery there chipotle uh, ranch honey mustard Word. nice hell awesome. yeah thank Legend. you yeah, yeah. yeah solid awesome yeah so um Nowadays, I just feel like I'll eat anything, dude. I'll just, I'll try whatever in order to, like, you know, widen the horizon of my uh, palate. I don't know. It's like, it's good. texture doesn't bother me. And taste is kind of within reach. Uh, you know, I don't, 
I don't uh, put anything out of question until I've tasted it and I'm like, okay, like, I don't really like that. But yeah, at least you tried it. Yeah, at least I tried it. That's yeah. pretty much where I'm at nowadays. Like, cool. So, Tommy, let's take some bites here. Yeah, let's get into it. Bon appetit. Yeah, I might. Yeah. It's like the munchy food right sauce. here. You, yeah, you're looking, you dove in for the, the Jamaican uh, hot sauce right there. And they're playing the reggae vibe. It's like, yeah, I love all reggae. Together. I love reggae. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the, the crisp of the bread. The crunch. With the, the mixture of the avocado, the fresh avocado on there too. Yeah. Oh, that's bomb biggie. Yeah. I can taste that spicy mayo in there too. Yeah, I'm joking they say that's so mm -hmm. like, Not that plenty of times, so it's just, so, so like, it's why I come back with so many good sandwiches, so many different varieties. It's like, and good vibes? Yeah, and the vibe is like, choose a different one every time and you just stay and kick it. Oh, yeah. How many times a week do you come here? Mm -hmm. It used to be more frequent because I live like right up the street, but nowadays it just depends. You know, I'm in here every once in a while, kind of come in and say hi, and kick it, and hang out. And, uh, I don't know. I don't even always come here to eat. I just come in to say hi, and maybe get a little bread to each and just hang out. Oh, right, like yeah. family. Yeah, I like extended family here. I really vibe with everybody, and uh, over time we build. A good relationship, so you know it's like saying hi to everybody and coming in. Just being here is, is enough sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's totally rad. That's really that's really good of you. Wow, I'll try this one too. How was it? Got some spice to it. That little kicky. I'm not gonna lie. Little kick to it. Nice complimentary to the meat. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, I like it. I'm glad I don't really get heartburn too much because this shit would set me off. <laughs> right? You know, I've, I've seriously like had heartburn maybe like two or three times in my whole life, wow. and it's like the worst shit. Ever. What did you eat to get that? Um, it was you know what? It was probably from drinking bitchalas, but drinking them too early in the day and then going skating and just having like put too much spice in there or like I. Ate, a lot of hot sauce, and then while I'm skating, that's when it sets in, you know, because I'm working off of that uh -huh. as my fuel to be skating. Mm -hmm. you know? It's just not, it's just not good. It's <laughs> just mm -hmm. not good. So, <clears throat> but yeah, taking care of it, like, it doesn't even go away, like, immediately, you know, you don't just, like, go get some Tums or go get <laughs> fucking whatever, like, Pepto-Bismol. That shit doesn't disappear because of that, you know? Like, you gotta sit with it for a minute and you're like, damn, like, it really does hurt and it's super uncomfortable. But, I mean, just teach you not to eat super spicy shit before skating. Like, <laughs> at least Wait give it some, skating. Yeah, give it some time to digest. That's just not, good. You know? I really like that. Sure. Mm. Oh man, it feels good. It feels good to just eat. It feels good too. <laughs> like fresh food too. Like it's a blessing, dude. Yeah, it's energy, man. Yeah. Something uh, I've been doing lately is trying to moderate my intakes of different meats. You know, like try not to eat as much red meat. I've like stopped eating hamburgers pretty much all together. I just order veggie burgers nowadays. Oh, um, Beyond meat? Yeah, I mean, I actually been working with the company. Um, it's, uh, it's called Hemp. Like, it's all hemp derived food. Like basically, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up and just like read the process. But okay. it's like hemp based, like plant based, like everything. It's just, it's amazing, dude. Like, I have, like, breakfast sausages, and I'll make, like, yeah, like, little what's breakfast it, what's sandwiches. What's the company called? Hemp. Hemp. H-E-M-P. -H and it's, like, Hemp. each thing, yeah, each thing stands, each letter stands for a word, like, I can't remember. And they're hooking you up right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm working with them. I mean, I, I get, like, you know, free product or whatever, and then kind of post them on my Instagram. Where are they from? 
Uh, right here in San Diego. Woo. I want to try that stuff. Oh, we should. That's good. Dude, we got to do another show about that. Oh, yeah, we will. We'll we go will. to the factory and see what's up. Yeah, yeah, it's right here local, too. Oh. So, I mean, it's all within within reach. Wow. Okay, I'm, I, I'm really, like, in, interested, like, nowadays, because this vegan, plant-based food has been blowing up lately, because I think social media has helped it, too. Oh, for sure. Like, I'm so intrigued about it. Now you just told me about this other company. Like, what? Oh, I'm gonna try that. And then how, how do you hook up with that? Funny story. I was riding for Weed Maps for the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. And they just ended their uh, program in October of last year, mm. which um, was kind of perfect timing for me. <laughs> right? Just, just stopped smoking weed. Just stopped like really doing THC altogether. So okay. um, yeah, like. One of the guys that worked there was, um, he was basically like the guy would look for to get me any products, and I would have to call him and be like, "Hey, yo, like, can you give me a box, like, whatever." And well, actually, not not him for Weed Maps, but he worked with Weed Maps, and he was doing uh, Flavor X. So um, his name's Braylon, and he actually was done working with Flavor X and ended up, you know, starting this hemp company. And in doing so, like, I kept his contact, we kept in touch, and he's like, yo, man, I'm like, starting this company, I would, like, really like you to be a part of it, like, you know, let me send you some stuff. And I'm like, all right, yeah, let's do it. So, got my first little box, and you know, I got these veggie burgers, I got these, um, like, uh, breakfast patties and like kind of just came in the mail of stuff. what's up came in the mail uh no i just go pick them up okay so yeah. it's like still cold mm-hmm. okay. yeah i go pick them up from his house so like go from his house to my house throw okay. them right back in the freezer and then, oh so he's starting out grassroots style oh yeah yeah he's like we actually um had him come in here and see if we can get some stuff working with them mm. but uh um, we're, we're still in the process you know, all right like, he's uh um, I think he's in the process of getting in, like Target and stuff like that right now. So he's really he's making some accounts, making some moves. He's on a he's on a journey right now. Yeah, for sure. That's and, tight. Uh, you're part of that. Yeah, I'm stoked, dude. I'm stoked to be a part of is anything. I, I heard I heard the requirements to work here is that you gotta be part of the green team <laughs> when yeah. you come to work. You gotta go have safety <laughs> things. <and all> <laughs> oh man, this food's so good. Got any like crazy bad food experiences that you've encountered? Mm. Oh yeah, actually, there's just one spot down in Chula. Chula Wana? Yeah, Chula, Chula Wana, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was this taco shop that we always used to go to as kids. And their burritos would be like massive, you know, and it was always like really good. But one time I decided to order something different. I was like, let me get the super burrito, right? I'm like, probably gonna be like packed with bomb ass shit, right? Ended up that the one time I decided to check my burrito, probably the only time I've ever checked my burrito in my whole life, I open it and there's a fucking cockroach in there. No lies. No lies. Fucking huge cockroach. And I'm like, one or one? No, just one. One just like sitting there, just like all fucking one. Like, just, uh, dude, I was like, oh no my god. Way. Like, I'm never coming yeah. here. Yeah, I took it back in. I was like, give me my money back. Like, I'm not fucking call it. Like the, uh, the Federalis? Dude, yeah, <laughs> fucking. Nah, dude, it was fucked, dude. It was so bad. Like, oh, I was just like, yo, that shit just set me off, dude. I was like, now I'm going to check every food item I get, like, from here on out. I was like, you never know, dude. You never know. Like, if you don't open your burritos and check, it might be something. Yeah, it was just like, it wasn't hidden very well because when I opened it, it kind of just like was there. You know, I was like, fuck, it wasn't mixed in to where like I had to go find it. Like, I just opened it up and it was like, fell out on the side. So that person that made it didn't care. Oh, no. They didn't was like, did you do that? Yeah, no. They're like, well, and because I'm a white person or in Mexico. Might Maybe have I had something to do with it, but I'm not. Were you faded when you ordered? Nah. This is like when I was probably like 17 or 18. Like okay. Younger and, um, so you weren't being a smart ass? Nah, nah. I was like, usually when I order food, I try to be as like 
nice as possible because I want good food. Yeah. Like, you, you don't, don't want a cockroach. Yeah, don't be a dickhead because <laughs> that's when you do get cockroaches right? in food. It's like when you're acting like an asshole, you're like, oh yeah, like, I'm fucking, like, I didn't ask for that. Like, another thing I never do is like send food back. Whenever you send food back, it's probably going to come back worse than it came the first time. I'm like, I'm just over it. You know, if it's something I don't want on there, I'll just take it off myself. I'll just deal with it. You know? Or but, order something else. Yeah, or order something else. Like, um, but in the end, if it really comes down to it, I'll just get my money back and I'll just go somewhere else. Like, I'm not gonna like cross over it. But if it's something that needs to be acknowledged, like a bug in your food, like I would tell the people, I'm like, yo, like that's not the way to do business. What did they say when you said that? Bro, they like they were like tripping. They're like, oh, we didn't put that in there. I'm like the fuck I opened the burrito and I found it in there like I wouldn't just go pick up a fucking bug and put it in my food and just to tell you like I have a bug in my food I don't want right. free food I want a good food you know right. like, it was just weird but uh, I ended up getting my money back and <clears throat> just laughed I was like dude this place is fucking gross so yeah, never, bad. never been there again and I'm, I'm sure it's still there but I was like yo dude that's I'm never going there again. I've never been ever since. So, yeah. Wow, that's a crazy one. I've never experienced that before. Yeah. It's, Whoa. I mean, as, as many people, like, or as much as people talk about it, like, oh, like, you get fucking, like, bug in your food or whatever. I'm like, I actually experienced it. And I was, like, surprised, like, that I did because I was, like, I didn't even know, dude, like, I, like what the fuck? Like, this shit actually happens? Like, people are down to, like, fuck with this shit. You know? like, if, if, that was in, if that was in Thailand, it'd probably right, be okay. Yeah, it it'd probably be okay, because like, they eat that stuff. What? We put that in there on purpose. <laughs> we get an extra. We're hooking you up. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, when I went to Thailand, uh, on the streets, they have all, like, the fried foods like uh they have like deep fried crickets and all that shit I'm like i chose to eat that though you know and, like i got like a little bag of crickets and, like, it just kind of tastes like burnt popcorn you know and, like, just put like some salt and pepper and it's not that bad really if i can choose to do it though that's when i'll actually do it if i if i don't have a choice you're gonna put it in my food that's that's yeah, no one likes surprises yeah unless they're know. gifts yeah <laughs> unless it's a good surprise you right know? Like, <laughs> Get like an extra scoop of ice cream or something. You're like, oh, okay, thanks. But, oh, yeah. yeah. That's probably the only one that I can really think about that you know I really look at and remember and be like, whoa, that was like fucking gnarly. Other than that, it's just like you know, occasional hair in your food, something like that. I I always hope and and assume that a longer hair would be like falling from their head. <laughs> but if it's any shorter than like, you know, maybe your thumb, like, you know, if it's like, that's a question, but I want no fucking tubes oh, and that shit. No, 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 so, uh, yeah. Other than that, I do a lot of pho. Like, I really oh. enjoy pho. Yeah. I'm so glad you pronounced it correctly. Why? Why people say pho or... Yeah, I've been eating it long enough to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... All right, last thing. What are you working on now? Like, your future? What's going on with you lately? Projects, your life? Yeah. Um, I got a couple of things on the plate. Um, I'm working on a Mexico part right now, which is filmed all of Mexico. Um, call it Te Amo Mexico. And in other words, I love Mexico. And um, it's filmed by me and my friend uh, Danny Goycoleta. Crap Crew? Uh, yeah, Crap Crew is uh, my homie Azaf, which we meet up with him. Uh, he's down there on the east side of DJ, over off uh, the Otai side. And uh, we cross over and skate with him all the time. And if we're not skating with him, like Danny, we call him DJ. And uh, he works for Slappies. And uh, yeah, we just go stay with his mom out in Mexicali. And, We'll spend like a weekend there and just stack clips. It's, it's a good time. I love all the people down in Mexico. I love the culture, the skate spots, like everything about it is just, it's not really, um, 
seen for what it's worth, you know, like people kind of downplay it a little bit because they're a little, a little apprehensive to go, maybe because of things that happen down there, like you like hear all these stories about people getting kidnapped. You watch too much TV. Yeah, yeah, you know, you read the headlines in the news and you're like, oh, I'm not going down there, you know, like I'm going to get kidnapped. And you're like, you got to go down there with the right people at the right time and know when to and when not to go out, you know, like, don't go out, out at night with, you know, less than a couple people, don't go out by yourself where you don't know where you're at, you need to know a certain amount of Spanish, if you don't know Spanish, you need to have somebody with you that speaks Spanish, like, there's pretty much guidelines, you know, like, like anywhere you go, you're not going to go to a foreign country you've never been to and expect to be, like, in, like, in tears, you're like, oh, I'm going to go down the street and it's going to be all good, you're like, you don't speak the language, you don't know the people like and if you've never been there like you need to have respect for where you're at and just kind of like know the roads so that's all that's all part of it it's all relevant and uh, yeah like, that's just something i'm working on right now um with dg like i think it's been like a good year and a half two years so we started not really knowing we were going to film it as a part as much as it just started to become one over time like we were filming for uh sober in the past couple months here like it's been about a month and a half i've tried to make this decision previously but it only lasted you know like a couple days to a week and i'll just go right back into it and uh, now i'm really sticking with it and i i uh, see and feel the benefits on a regular basis and it's really keep it going yeah no it's really uh really good for me and my family life and uh, my social life, skateboarding, like, it's just all been super beneficial and, you know, uh, I checked into my last AA, or my first AA last week, and I got like kind of mixed up, but, um, yeah, I went, kind of did it on my own, just knowing that it would be better for me, that if I did this on my own and, and never had to have somebody tell me to do it or I had to have a court order, like that it would be a beneficial thing for me on my journey and it, it has been like the first time i went i i was hearing people tell stories and, and you know hearing my own story through their experiences and really kind of embracing the lifestyle that i once lived but also embracing the new lifestyle that's ahead of me and it's i don't i don't know you know like there's so many things that I never knew about being sober and all the rewards that it, it brings and you know it's it's kind of frowned upon like in the weirdest way like people are like oh you're sober like you're not gonna drink anymore and you're like yeah I'm just not gonna drink anymore you know like I don't want to wake up hungover like I don't want to have to struggle with you you know if I drank a beer before I skated like now I feel like kind of like can't think straight or like my balance is off and I'm just like kind of like that for me, like whatever you know it's just part of it and, uh, now I just feel so much more in tune so much more aware and present that everything makes so much more sense that I wouldn't have it any other way you know so just and being, yeah and being in the mind state I'm in now and, and having the desire to keep it going like I'm willing to do anything to like have clarity. Being sober is my clarity right now. But, you know, and that also includes weed. Like I took a big break from weed. Um, I used to smoke bongos every day, all day. Uh, I would smoke tobacco and weed together. So that's even more of like a, you know, a downer that you're just like super fucking stoned. You know, it like takes over on a whole different level. Like whether you smoke indica or uh, sativa, like it, it adds that much more to what you're smoking. Like the tobacco gives you a head buzz, it kind of sticks with you a little longer. It's almost like this weird combo that like, it's you like lightheaded and it just sticks with you. And like I, I really enjoyed that for a long time and like kind of being out of my mind and being like, oh, I got that trick when I was like baked and like you think that's like an addition to what you're doing, but it really doesn't matter, you know, like it doesn't do anything positive and I wasn't using it in the right way to say if it was medical marijuana, I'm not using it medically to take care of any issues that I felt needed my attention, you know, so maybe, uh, in the future, if I ever do decide to use like weed as, as medical marijuana, maybe I'll find a way to 
moderate when to do it and how to do it rather than to just kind of use it whenever and however and let it you know interfere with what I do on a, a daily basis and I felt like that was what was happening you know like I have my kids I need to pay attention to and, and sometimes I just be like a little, a little spacey yeah a little spacey a little like you know off course with what I really need to get done and um now I just feel like whatever I have ahead of me, I'm able to do like right then and there, just get it done, and, like face my issues head on, and, you know, deal with the emotional aspects and be able to acknowledge what those emotions are and be able to feel them and be in them and like really understand them because um, when you numb yourself to those things with substance such as alcohol or you know, weed or whatever you choose like you really don't get to uh, fully become the person that you are and you can improve uh, you can improve your life and everything that comes along with it by being sober and living a sober lifestyle and having the clarity of knowing that everything you're doing it has your full attention you know? so that and um, I don't know I'm just really working on taking care of my kids and being the best dad I can be being a husband to my wife and uh, you know being the best person I can to everybody around me and making a positive influence uh I do weekly check-ins, weekly updates on my Instagram, just kind of letting sure. people know, yeah, letting people know, you know, like, you're in a similar struggle, like, here, like, I give you my life on a weekly basis, I don't care who tunes in or what they get out of it, like, I'm just hoping that by doing so, I'm helping myself stay accountable every week that that next time I do it, I know that's a week behind me that I'm still sober, that I'm still able to, you know, stay on the right track. And then, um, yeah, sometimes I'll get, you know, troll comments like, oh, like this guy, fucking sober guy, I think he's all whatever. And like, it's like, are you only doing this for like Insta fame or whatever? And I'm like, it has nothing to do with any of that. It's just really like something that I've made a decision to do on my own without having anybody influence me in any kind of way and I just started doing it and once I was doing it I kept doing it and now it's a habit and just like being sober it's, it's a habit now and creating that habit and just creating a more uh, livable lifestyle yeah. so. I think what you're doing is awesome because I think there's other people out there they'll be able to relate with you too they'll be watching but I'm going through this right now too yeah. yeah there's I mean I have people on both sides of the spectrum it's like, like I have people that are struggling and really want to get to the point that I'm at or want to get sober not even to like you, know, you don't have to reach out for many days just the fact that you decide to go sober is enough and then the people that already are sober you know like a lot of people oh, like five years like that it feels great like I've never, you know I've never fucking thought about going back because I just couldn't imagine my life the way it was you know and like they've had different experiences to get them where they're at you know? like maybe they had to go to jail maybe they had to go homeless maybe they had to lose their family like there's a lot of different aspects that come to play that I mean, you either make the decision by yourself and you know it's best for you or somebody is making the decision for you because you got yourself into a situation that you know like now it's court order for you to go to this meeting or like you have to you got a DUI and you have to do this and that and there's all different kind of things that make people realize the value of being sober and I'm glad that I think I said it before like I never had anything that forced me into the situation of being sober other than the fact that I wasn't paying enough attention to what I really needed to be doing like I, I could still maintain everything. I, uh, I could still get through my daily you know, hustle and drink, drink and smoke and do whatever. But it just wasn't as, like, like not the quality I get now. You know, like, a, I'm not there as much as I was. You know, like, 
or I'm there more than I was now than before. And, uh, you know, like my wife, uh, she told me like toward the end of uh, this past year, like this was like the last year that I was like just really getting out of control and like partying and like, coming home at like three, four in the morning. And, you know, I'd have to wake up at six thirty, seven to take care of the kids, and I'm like really struggling, you know, and I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? And I can never find a reason to stop, you know, and like, she would tell me, she's like, oh, like, you're, you're looking like pale, and you're looking like yellowish, and like, all this weird shit, and like, oh, your skin looks fucked up, and you're wrinkly, and all this stuff, and like, I started looking at myself, and I'm like, dude, like, I do look pretty deep right now, dude, and like, I just finally got sick of it. I was like, okay, like, I really need to change something. I need to do it quick because I'm feeling like in my kidney or my liver, like, you know, I'd have these weird sharp pains. I'm like, dude, like, this is not normal. And, uh, and yeah, I just got to a point where it's like life was unmanageable. Like I couldn't wake up and do the same thing over and over again. It was literally exhausting. Like skateboarding was, you know, going every which way. I was losing the sponsor here, losing the sponsor there. Like, you know, getting sit down to be like, hey, like we need a skate part out of you. Like, are you gonna be able to like finish? You know, like at the like halfway through the damn it all. It's, Probably at the beginning of last year, like I gotta sit down with Jamie and just like, yo, like you only got like uh, ten to fifteen clips, and we need like like forty clips. You know, like I would like you to have like almost a full part if you can. I'm like, all right, dude, like, let's do it. Like, cause I knew what I had to do to get it done, so I just kind of like buckled down and got it done. But even then, I was still doing whatever, you know, I was still drinking, smoking, so it never really settled with me that like I had to give up I could still get everything I need to get done so I'm like dude I don't have a problem like managing you know but come to realize like managing being hungover and managing things it's like way too much to deal with for me you know and, like I have other things that really need my full attention that I was interfering with and I just wasn't willing to keep going that way and destroying my body and my mind and the people around me, the relationships I have with my family, my friends. Just, uh, I just saw more value in it than, than anything to be so I'm just glad I made that decision. No, it's good for you. Yeah. yeah. Keep it going. That's <laughs> rad. Will do. That's rad sharing that yeah. with us. But you know what? Thank you for sharing Chiba Hut. Oh, thanks, Chiba, for sharing with us. Food was bomb, diggity, tasty. Super bang. I ate it all. It was yummy. Hot I sauce, I so love. I talking, I can barely finish. <laughs> While he finishes up, I think we're going to wrap up, and then we're going to go skate, right? Yeah, let's do it. Where are we going to skate at? City Heights Park. Sure. Is it lit up, too? Uh, Yeah, they got lights. All right. We're going to go skate City Heights. Never been there yet. I'm going to try to skate, you know, try to pull some maneuvers. Let's we'll see what happens. But I'm sure Tom is going to... Pull out some stuff. He's clear. He's clean. Clear headed now. They got a little bit of everything though. So he's small, medium, big. You got pump track. You got pump track. Nah, not down here. Ah, dang it. I was hoping to ride one of those. It's like a big pump track though, like the bowl or there's something. Little trannies in between. Okay. It's like it's just fun. Dude. I need that to warm up my yeah. my, my joints. It's a good vibe. Right on. Cool. Cheers, Tommy. Hey, Thank you. Thank exactly. you for sharing the spot. Chiba Hut, San Diego, off El Cajon Boulevard, right by the college right here. Get some. Come and get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man.
All right, thanks, Tommy. Thanks oh, yeah. for showing us Chiba Hut. <laughs> thanks for the skate session here at City Heights. Yeah, the dope spot. Solid. There you go, folks. Thanks for watching another episode of Roast Beef. Get yeah. some. Oh, yeah, guys. Beep.